which is too much fun with the organ sound over there, so we have to do introductions because we, I think you know Adam Stein, right? Yeah. And I'm here with Adam Johnson back here. And Lee Bakey to my right. Abel Carrick. And Rocky Sarah on that fabulous machine over there that does all kinds of amazing things. So Rocky, you want to say. So tonight we're, we're doing music that we love and that we rarely get to do sometimes at Mass. Uh, these are some, some things that we recorded as well. We've not been shy about telling you that we've got CDs to sell. And so... <laughs> You're gonna get to hear songs. They make great Christmas stockings. Stockings. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not making that over the head too much. But. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but we've got some songs that we've rarely done before. I, I recorded some things 10 years ago that we've never used at Mass. That tonight will be the first time I ever do it publicly, I think. You know? So, anyway, we hope you enjoy some of the selections we've made. Adam, you've got one. You know what? This one's actually got a fun story behind it because this is a song called John's Song. And it's um, on. Uh, like we said, we're not going to beat you over the head with it, but it'll tell you what CD it's from. Right on the bottom. Of the <laughs> so, so if you if you're ever wondering, it's right there. <laughs> but this is actually probably one of the first songs that I wrote when I was still in high school, and I had been given a spot doing um, a mass all the way out in Our Lady of Guadalupe in Queen Creek. It was a little mission parish, and uh, this was a song that we wrote for Advent that followed um, the gospel that you'll hear, and you'll saw, you know, you we'll hear this coming up this weekend, I believe, and then, uh, um, so we won't read that, but the one underneath it is where the refrain comes from, and the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so, as we prepare our hearts, that's what we're preparing to see, the Lamb of God, when we come at the round table, when we come together, we see Jesus in each other, and so that's what the song's about. Lord 
Especially this first part of the evening, we're going to kind of take you through the stories, as Robert was saying. And uh, so there's John preparing the way, and we talk, we sing that with Ready right the Way as well. And uh, we're moving right along. And so, what are we preparing ourselves for? What are we preparing ourselves for? I think we're preparing ourselves for. My answer, perhaps, is that we're preparing ourselves to answer the way Mary answered. And this amazing encounter that she had with an angel. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God, sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph in the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary, and coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. The song that I'm going to offer for this selection of this time to think about is um, a song that I did not write for the Annunciation, really. I wrote it for something altogether different. The song's called In You. And it came to me after it was finished that this could have been the angel speaking to Mary. And I think this is maybe God speaking to us as well. So I offer for the reflection. Done and then 
then contemplate a different story behind it all together. Surprises. This is the best time of the year for surprises. I'm always waiting for them, aren't you? <laughs> I'm kind of hoping for them. <laughs> Father Peter on Sunday preached, and he said, you know, you know, that whole thing about balance in the season, and I mean, not do that thing again that I always do every year. That would be the surprise if I didn't. <laughs> and I left on Sunday, I, like maybe you did, and I was in the car like an hour later, going, did it again. <laughs> I am waiting for surprises. I can imagine them. Mary being a bit surprised. But probably no more surprised than her cousin Elizabeth. <laughs> Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I have no relationship with man. And the angel said to her, reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, this must have been a huge surprise. <laughs> Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel departed. Let it be done according to your word, and let us be surprised. <laughs>
I wish I'd written that song. I didn't. It was written by Rory Cooney, a wonderful composer, right? I wish we'd recorded it too, we didn't record that. Next year. Next year. We're just going to continue the story along. And, uh, this song's kind of one of those that you hear a lot and don't really hear the full meaning behind it. And uh, I heard Adol sing it, and we knew that we had to put it on ours. And in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be involved. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went up to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Oh, hey. 
So, a voice we haven't heard in a while, Hannah Jetson. We invited Hannah back to do a little duet, some of you may not have heard before, a song that Lou and I wrote for Bonatale Gretschio a few years ago. And this song came about after a long conversation about the line enjoy the world, uh, all creation, the hills, the mountains, and everything is singing along for joy. Everything that the hills and the valleys are echoing back that all of creation was somehow engaged in bringing about this birth. And so wouldn't that also maybe include the donkey that Mary is driving? I mean, everybody forgets about the donkey. The donkey. So we have talking about the way that you became Mary and the donkey, and that maybe they had that friendly relationship between humans and animals that so many of us do. We love our pets. How could we imagine that they might not have had any kind of interaction at all, even just the petting or the caring for this poor donkey? This 95 miles, isn't that the distance between Nazareth and Bethlehem? 95 miles on a donkey, can you imagine? <laughs> so, I can't imagine going across the street on the donkey. <laughs> the song is called It's Just a Little Further Now, and it's a duet between the donkey and the donkey. And, and Hannah is singing Mary, and Lou is not only Elizabeth the old woman, but she's also <laughs> the donkey.
tiny heart whose blood will save us unto us is born.
The orange and palm trees sway. There's never been such a day in Phoenix, Arizona. It's not so apparent, but it's December the 24th. And I am longing to be up north where it's another 80 degrees.
So imagine by this time. <laughs>
Yeah, they didn't give us a script for this part. <laughs> well, the, uh, the thing that you can never count on is uh, technology deciding not to work on you. So, apologies. <laughs> As you see on the bottom of the screen, the, the title of what we did um, for our city that Rocky Adel and I put together this year was Mass at Midnight, and it started from Christmas memories of being dragged by my parents and falling asleep, my parents are right there. Um, and my dad's a Jewish convert, so I didn't have too long to deal with this. Like, I should sing as a, you know, <laughs> but that memory stuck, and, and so the idea of doing an entire liturgy on a CD so that you could pray along with it and not just listen to it is what we did, and so we have everything that you would hear normally done in a Mass, we've done some arrangements of the, the spoken Mass prayers and the sung Mass parts, and we did an arrangement of them. Norbert actually reads one of the readings on it, um, Brian does, Father Peter does, so the attempt was to make it feel like a liturgy, and to share that with you, the easiest way to do that is to share the psalm. And we've gotten to the spot where we're talking about Jesus being born, and so let's sing about it from the words of the psalm.
great job that I get to work with really creative people who love to explore sounds and ideas. And it's really amazing. I'm just back here mesmerized by Adam's playing. by all of it, energy and everything. It's really exciting to get to be a part of that. I'm so I'm very honored. My turn. One of the songs that uh, I put on gift was uh, an unusual, it's not really a Christmas song, it's called Lullaby. And Billy Joel had written it. And it was a request. Um, and I didn't understand the request at first. I and mean, it was just because it was a favorite song, but I had to think about it. Why would I put the song on a Christmas record? And what came to me was something that Father Rusty, so you might remember Father Rusty Shaughnessy. Father Rusty would talk about holy imagination or sacred imagination. You ever hear him talk about the retreats? Yeah. He used to use it as prayer. And uh, at the time, I think I was doing a lot of thinking about a relationship between Jesus and God, exploring my understanding of what the Trinity means. And that there had been some relationship prior to Jesus coming here to be with us. And prior to prior to our experience of Jesus, there was a relationship between God and Jesus. So I imagine this being um, a dialogue between God. Well, not even a dialogue, it's just a lullaby that God might sing to the infant that's born now.
in the hope that what you're experiencing tonight is that the music for us means way more than just a collection of CDs to put out there for people. They have been prayers as we put them together. Um, they're prayers as we listen to them. We hope that they're prayers for you and we invite you to start singing along with some of these prayers as we go through the last part tonight together.
next one is one that's not necessarily something that you would attach as a Christmas song. Again, the idea was to put some of these songs in a new light. We hear about the incarnation and the love of God stepping down to be with us.
tonight with us to celebrate this. 